Okay. Um, Ms. Gray just walked in. Let me interrupt here. So for the purpose of establishing a quorum, starting with Ms. Gray. I'm here. Ms. Gray is here. Mr. Fiorini. Fiorini here. Eisenberg here. <clears throat> totally here. Okay. A quorum is present on the council. Um, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, Don. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to um, just give Joe a chance to get back, but I, but I wanted to um, know as we're talking about kind of the outline for the next few months, and, and uh, there's been a concern expressed. I shared this with Chris Stevens at the end of the last meeting relative to the concurrency of the processes for the development of the administrative regulations and um, simultaneously processing. Uh, both the EIR and the Delta plan in final and final version and I don't know if maybe to take a little time whether it's appropriate now or after we come back in or before we close today's session to talk about that um, I know there's at least one member in the audience today who I think has raised that issue maybe with other council members as well but I, I just how we keep those not only uh, in their proper tracks but in the event that the Delta plan um, gets you know, further refinement as we go along, which it could with once we get supplemental uh, com comments on the supplemental EIR, we come back into the uh, final deliberations, and then how that might play with anything that's been submitted for review. Recognize, obviously, there's been some time um, concerns here, and I think Joe, you just mentioned that, obviously, you know, the amount of time. So I just wanted, to, I think it's important uh, for all to understand, certainly the council and this council member in particular, but but uh, others uh, as to how we're going to do that, but also maintain, I think the. <coughs> strong um, effort for public review, for transparency uh, as we've gone along through this entire process and that we can somehow at the end we don't get crunched on that by getting out ahead of ourselves or not uh, as it relates to administrative regulations and the final Delta plan adoption and, and uh, approval of the EIR at the end of the, end of the day. So, Mr. Stevens. <coughs> Yeah, that, and it's uh, a, a great question, um, and the processes inherent in the two processes that will uh, continue on the path toward completion, the CEQA process and the rulemaking <coughs> process, is to elicit public comment and to make changes as appropriate. So, as you know, if you give final direction to go ahead, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully will come out of this meeting, this is a... Uh, final draft Delta plan. So we've, what we're going to do is a supplemental chapter to the EIR, but inherent in that process is to get comments back. And if we have to make changes to the EIR or even the, the plan itself, we'll do that. We'll do the right thing. Similarly, on the rulemaking side, different type of focus, um, but it's on the, the policies, which will be turned into enforceable regulations. And, um, you know, the focus there will be on whether or not there's the appropriate authority, rationale, justification, whether or not they're clear, um, that kind of stuff. And, again, inherent in that process is getting public comment, and which is consistent with the transparency that you guys have, have really pushed for. And if need be, you make changes to the regulations um, and you send them back out according to the Administrative Procedures Act, depending on the change. It's kind of hard to talk in the right, hypothetical. Right, without knowing, yeah. And, and then you, you react to that. So your question is, is a good one. Um, inherent in that process is getting comments, and if, if they're appropriate to make changes, you make the changes, and you, you go through each of the processes. But the real difference here about running them concurrently especially with this, what I'll call a project, it's really a, a plan as we know, is that this plan has really been vetted. This plan is now in its seventh draft, I believe. It's gone through, you know, a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of uh, deliberation and public, public comment, hearings, uh, you know, working sessions like the one previously and perhaps today where we went and really uh, worked through all the issues. Um, so with regard to running the processes concurrently, we've pretty much got to a point where we think that the draft product is in near final form. So I feel comfortable, and I think the, the people that I work with and, and staff feel comfortable, that this is the, the way to go about getting us to where we have to get to in the shortest amount of time. Um, obviously, there are other ways to run the process. 
Uh, originally, we had proposed that we run through the CEQA process completely and then take whatever came out of that and then do the rulemaking. But at that point in time, it wasn't as vetted. The, the project wasn't as developed. I think we're at a different point now. So I think this is the, the path to go forward. But again, if there are changes that need to be made, we'll make those changes and we'll, we'll react accordingly. So, so, the, so in essence, then, the, the concurrency um, doesn't compromise the integrity of the process, either one of those processes, and allows room as we go through. I mean, I, I understand this, but I just, I'm kind of restating what I, what I heard you say and understand, is that uh, it allows us, again, as we circulate, in, in, in both those forums, uh, both the EIR final uh, staff draft and maybe the final draft that we put forward uh, for uh, consumption and consideration, as well as the administrative regulations, the policies, that if feedback comes in and there are changes that the council makes and or come out, you know, under, you know, under staff um, review, say we need to address this, and this could trigger further recirculation, again, nobody would predict that, but I mean, that, that, that could, or modification that could then, you know, reset the clock, at least in some way, but the, so the concurrency doesn't compromise, uh, uh, in, in, you know, I think certainly as far as we've come in, in, in the work we've done relative to its integrity, that's, I, I want to make sure that's really that, clear for the record. That, so. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Fiorini, question? Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnston has joined us. Uh, so we have all six members uh, of five. We have five of the members of the council here. Any further question by council members on the process? Uh, Mr. Stevens has uh, uh, joined in with Mr. Grindstaff to talk about what today will be like after our executive session. And uh, Mr. Stevens in particular was telling us what happens after we, uh, we go out and uh, recirculate uh, a chapter uh, or a new volume in the environmental impact report and prepare an issue for a 45-day comment period. This uh, September 5th uh, proposed final draft Delta plan. So that's the discussion that's gone on. Yes, Ms. Gray. Just one clar clarification. Um, uh, by the way, there's a button that it, I think it's a white button you press. When and it's if it's on. Uh, yep, yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stevens, I, I think I heard you say that um, the ER process will happen, and at the end of that process, there's ability for the council to to make changes if noted. Or, or can you just tell me that part again? Sure. Then I heard concurrency. What is it? Right, right. Well, we'll, we'll start with the oh, first. My. Yeah, the first okay. question. Um, right now, what we have in the process is hopefully coming out of today is a final draft Delta plan, and I emphasize the word draft. So you haven't approved anything. In, uh, with regard to the, your final stamp of approval and turn it into a Delta plan, this is a draft. The CEQA process is not complete yet. The administrative rules process would, to turn these, the policies into uh, enforceable regulations hasn't started yet, and that has to run its course before those become enforceable regulations. So what we'll have is a draft plan, which we think Again, this has been fully vetted now for many meetings, is in pretty good shape. It's in near final form, we hope, but it's still a draft plan. So until you as a council decide that the environmental review process has been adequately completed, and it's called, you'll actually certify the, the environmental document, the uh, document that we're producing, once you certify that, you can go ahead and adopt this plan. That means that the plan um, is no longer a draft plan. It, it is the Delta plan. But until you do that, um, it's still a draft. And you may make changes based on the environmental review process, and you may make changes, as Don talked about, coming out of the rulemaking process. So change is possible. Um, the two processes are in place because um, uh, we want to elicit public comment to make sure that we're doing it correctly. We've, we've heard stakeholders and others, and, and we've jumped through all the hoops that we have to jump through procedurally until we get to the point where we can say we've completed both of those uh, uh, processes, they're done, and we can now adopt the Delta plan. So a long-winded answer to your, your pointed question, change, it, it could change. 
um, based on what comes out of the environmental review process and the rulemaking process. So based on the action today, will this be considered uh, the council's plan is no longer staff's plan? Is that what it means when we make the decision today? Well, right. I think that the decision, as Joe laid out, um, you, you've already adopted a motion um, that came out of the past three meetings, which laid out the, the path forward. And as you know, we, uh, as staff, um, took your direction, made changes, and then pursuant to the council's direction, we took what we, we saw as a, a proposed final draft plan and presented it to the chair and the vice chair for their review. And they had a chance to go through it. And um, they can obviously speak for themselves. But um, my understanding is that the, the plan, the, the staff um, faithfully uh, discharged the direction that you gave us um, with a few minor errata that we'll talk about later. And, and so once the council here today says, uh, yeah, based on the chair and the vice chair's review and your independent review of having looked at the plan, that this is the, the so-called pens down or near final product to start the, the CEQA review and the rulemaking review, that this will be the final draft Delta plan. So we're going to take off the, the staff, which means that it's, it is your product, but it's still a draft product. Again, it's not a final product until those, the CEQA process is done and the rulemaking process is at least near final. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the, just on the procedure? Uh, okay, members, I am going to suggest that we uh, recess into executive session. We will resume at 10.15, at 10.15, uh, our uh, uh, attentive and uh, scary-looking uh, media folks have agreed uh, that they will be present in the room, so if you want to leave papers and materials here, they will dutifully guard the, uh, uh, the material in our absence, uh, yes, using their peace officer status to do so. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, any uh, further comment or question? Okay. Members, we're going to uh, recess into an executive session, and uh, that is downstairs. One, two, three.